we're going to talk about uh, my mother-in-law, Clarissa Rizal, gave me permission to share this little thing. Uh, Bill Lampy is this wonderful Filipino man, married into the Clinket, and so that's my, my wife's grandfather, Bill Lampy. And he was always talking about Don Howard. You know what? I just saw, I just saw Don Howard. You know, and so he was pretty hard of hearing. And so finally, he's just, he, you know, Don Howard, he, wrote, he writes the books with Nora. <laughs> so, Richard Dowen Howard. Dowen Howard. Don Howard. <laughs> he also called me uh, Eastman. You know, we were wondering, there was a, there was a, a gift. Christmas gift with Eastman on it, <laughs> and it just stayed there. No one opened it. <laughs> um, and finally, Lily asked, "Who's this for?" You know, Eastman. You know, your boyfriend. <laughs> so, we all love Bill. Bill Lampy. So, and we all loved uh, quite enough Richard Downhauer. We're gonna share about his legacy. There's there's so many uh, facets of his legacy. It's just going to be a, a special opportunity. And he was adopted into the Chukinebi clan. And so we would, we would acknowledge um, anyone here among the, the Chukinebi. Um, and we would acknowledge, I've seen um, some of our, uh, some of our um, elders, they really wanted to give the example I just saw on the panel Kenny Grant and George Bennett and Paul Marks that we acknowledge our our precious opposites when we get up and just check in that practice. So Isha Siknachadi, Akhik Oas Kagwan Khan, Chukinadi, Chukin Shah, Mushkitan, Yaani Aya, Akhik Oas Mushkitan, Gunchish, Gunchish Aya. And if there's anyone that I've forgotten, I know this is a larger room. Just know that Kapunek Nayi, you're close to our hearts. Hey Di, she's here, here with us. And so um, we're gonna share on the different facets of Richard Downhauer's life. Uh, my um, Sergey Khan, um, Richard's longtime colleague, has. Uh, you know, been friends with my family, with, with the Dallenhauers for, for decades. And he's worked on this book called Sharing Our Knowledge, based on these conferences where elders are side by side and equal with the scholars. And they did a, this amazing talk. When they were together, Richard and Nora were together, it was always just beauty and a wealth of knowledge that they had to share. And um, pristine, uh, exact, concise, um, and extremely insightful, you know, every time they had to share this, on how to work, the methodology, how to work with Native communities, how to work with elders, work with their stories, articulating that brilliantly. And so they did that one time, uh, there are keynote speakers in 2007, and so it's in that book, that Sharing Our Knowledge book. So, and there's so many examples of that. I listened to a, a recording in 1993, a clan conference uh, then, and the way that he described how you do these things was just extremely concise, where you feature the elders, and you learn about these, these issues, you learn how to honor um, what they said. You know, they provided that example. And it's just very, um, very important to remember that. Very important. You know, just try to remember the specifics, the exact ways, you know, um, of the examples before us. You know. So we're going to start with Barbara, Barbara Caliente. She worked with um, the Downhowers for many years. She helped with uh, these books. Some people might not know that, actually that um, she helped with um, editing, with uh, typesetting, with, with, with um, organizing. Hatubu Nagliyis, Hakustiyi, these amazing books 
from the classic Sukhumkhit oral literature. Um, and and Yanis, uh, she's going to share with you. Finish Chish, and, and thank you for that introduction. And I too wish to uh, acknowledge my father's people here in our comp company, the the Lee Nadi, and particularly the family of Richard Downhower, his wife Nora Marks Downhower, and their children Carmela and uh, Lee and Adela and Lorenzo's out there somewhere, I'm sure. And I know they had something like 12 grandchildren and 17 greats. I don't know if it's grown since that number. 18 now. It, it is, 18. That's quite a celebration. Um, it's quite a privilege to be here before you. And thank you, Ishmael and the organizers Sheesh. for inviting me to be here, though I declined um, several times. Here I am. <laughs> I declined because I thought, this man is so great and so large. Um, what is it that you wish for me to share? But it is an opportunity, particularly when we think of the um, elders who said, someday you'll shout out my name. And they didn't mean so much their name in particular, but they meant that you will know who you are and you'll know the connection to your past. Um, before I even move on, I, I also want to acknowledge um, my mother, Irene Cadiente, who's here in the audience, and my sisters, Andrea and Ronaldo and Genevieve, and I have nieces and nephews. And I say that as an introduction because my history with uh, uh, the Marks goes way back from the time I was a little girl. We used to go out to Off Bay and we used to uh, picnic. And um, they would light up the fire that would, that, a fire that would sometimes light up trees. And, uh, <laughs> and we ate and sang and, and had a good time. And, but um, most important is that my mother and Nora, among other Native women who married Filipino men, worked very hard in establishing a place here in Juneau so that their children would have a place to gather and celebrate uh, our traditions and without any fear of, of, of uh, discrimination. And so our mothers worked very hard in fundraising to um, buy and, uh, and to occupy the first Filipino community. And that's another history in and of it, itself. But it's important to mention that because it's something that Richard celebrated. He celebrated that every time he saw uh, my sisters and I. He always called us, well, here come the three bears, or here come those bears. And he celebrated that when he saw the Bellardi sisters, too. And on and on it goes, the families that are um, Clinkett and Filipino. Uh, and he reminded me every time how important that history was. But that was um, what's so great about uh, Richard. We know him as a scholar, a poet, a translator, a historian a lector and a, a cantor at his church. When I was um, hired um, or asked to come back to see Alaska Heritage Foundation, it was in 1985, I was um, one of the first employees of the Alaska Heritage Foundation uh, when the board had met in Sitka, a Sea Alaska board in 1980, 81. And there were a, uh, it was a gathering of the Alaska elders speak to the future. And while the board had originally thought that the conversation would be about the social needs of our people in transportation, education, health, etc., the elders that gathered there impressed on the board that what was needed was the continuation and the repatriation of knowledge and the celebration of who we are as Tlingit, Haida, and Simshian. And out of that conversation, um, I know Dick and Nora were there, and they translated um, the speeches then into the first book, Because We Cherish You. And how fitting it is that this is the testament of um, Richard and Nora, a living testament that many of us um, return to time and again. It has become a household phrase, Because We Cherish You. And it certainly was from the elder George Davis, who said to the board, even now our grip is weary from holding on to it, here, those of us who are Tlingit, it is deep to where most of it is sunk from our grip. And who will come to help? It's interesting to think back that I believe it was in 1970 that uh, Richard first came to Alaska and that there was already something very spiritual in motion that he was preparing. He had already um, earned his PhD in, in oral um, comparing um, literature. and. Uh, that's real important to reflect on. He 
was the scholar of scholars in, in knowing the greatest classics uh, of, of this universe. And I started to think, what is it that um, I was unique to see and to share in my company with uh, Richard and Nora that is worth mentioning and to walk away today to see part of it in ourselves. And I settled on the word that he was a humble man. A humble man that even I would say that's a contradiction to who Richard Dallantower is. But he was humble in this. One of the definitions of humility is that you forgo who you are, your experience, your stature, all that you believe to be your worth, even your ego, for the greater good. And that requires coming um, into a situation almost impoverished with nothing. And I say that um, because he certainly had a focus that he left all behind. And to do that, he had to let go of everything, to enter into this realm, this realm that was of the spirit, to listen, to really listen to the, the ancestors that were present in all of us noble people. He was there to listen to what they had to say and to be obedient to that. And truthfully, even now, you need a humble spirit. You need to be in the company of, of uh, and prepare yourself to be in the company of, of the ancients. And all along, he had uh, Nora to help guide him into that. And I've said it before, and, and I say it with great love and respect, that she certainly kept him humble. <laughs> <laughs> and many a time when I was working at my apple, and I almost was tempted to bring it. I still have it, the first <laughs> apple that I worked with, all of the works that they had um, typeset ahead, and, and, and some that I had typeset. I still have it, and it still looks brand new. But it's this tiny little screen and box. But, um, on it was the Tlingit fonts that were created um, by uh, Sea Alaska Heritage. Uh, Fred White was uh, present then and um, new to this kind of work at Sea mm -hmm. Alaska Heritage. And um, my job was to type the English text line by line with the Tlingit text. And not knowing Tlingit then, and I'm sorry to say uh, not even now, but in the spirit, it captured me. It captured me, and I, I recall typing Patu on the Guya. Sorry for my broken voice. And when I was born, uh, my grandparents had, had passed away long before I was even a twinkle in my father's eye. And it was then that I came into the company of my grandparents. I was overwhelmed with um, emotion. It just captured me, I didn't expect it. That was the power of, of this work, um, to invite us all to, to live in that realm. But he was the kind of person, too, to you know, celebrate those ahas for each and every single one of us that we pulled into it. When I say that, uh, you have to be a humble person to come into that kind of work. There was an edginess about him. <laughs> And an edginess was when, uh, and I see his daughter Lee laughing because they know more than I do, but there was an edginess to him when he was pulled away from the work. He was absorbed in it. And I think to have followed Richard which, and Nora, which I had wished to do, um, I couldn't do because it meant that you were to forsake all else, and that was to be your all in all, which they made their life's work. They're all in all, and we have it. It's amazing that we have have this work before us. And I was reflecting on this, that how did they know? How did they know to go after our, our thinking or our narratives and to capture those? How did they know that that would be that, that thread that would endure the test in time and has? And then also the kuik. How did they know? And they knew because over and over, even to the very last days, um, they were very, very much living out their faith. They attended the Russian Orthodox Church, and, and my family and I attend the Catholic Church right across the way. And it was a curious sight to see the Russian Orthodox and uh, the Presbyterians from down the street below and the Catholics all um, during Easter um, in, in our, our uh, finest uh, uh, 
church regalia, and um, and to see Richard and Nora um, participating in this. But that was it. It was just that comparativeness. It was a way of their faith and their traditions to enter into that realm of the spirit. And uh, after mass and after their church services, he would say, "Hello, Caviente Bears," and there would be Nora and, and uh, uh, holding on to Richard's arm, um, also going um, back to the car to uh, have the rest of their Sunday with family. When I look back about the the work that they did and the work I did for them, um, it was certainly a privilege, and it continues to feed me and, and my family. And I, I know our time is limited, but I, I wanted to come back to the, the sense of ritual, ceremony, and tradition that was so important to them. It wasn't just for that self, for that edification, to have that that spiritual experience, um, <coughs> that otherness sense of being. It was for a purpose, and the purpose continued to unfold. And it unfolded in their work of axe handle curriculum that they did with uh, the Scollins. It, it's the curriculum that they piloted in Cake Schools, and the intention of what that was that when our children know place, then they also know who they are. And the curriculum was designed to help avert the, the number of suicides that were occurring with our people. So there was always an intention and purpose for this work. It was about identity, and it was about moving forward as a people, knowing our place and our communities and our clan and, uh, and in this universe. So I, I would want to leave you with, with this thought about the work of, of Richard and Nora, um, particularly um, that, that it was like, this drawing all the air out of our lungs when he crossed over. That uh, that he was a canter, like I mentioned, and, as it was in is Nora. And it was that singing, that singing, and to hear that come back to you and bless you and lift you up. And that's what he would want for all of us. And that's, I think, what he was called into by the Spirit to sing and to live out our traditions and, and uh, wherever we find ourselves. So I want to thank you for um, being here and for making it so important, even the clan conference that he and Nora invested their time into, because it is about discovering the, the wonderful um, sense of self and our responsibility to place and to the universe and to our children. And so the work that is founded in the schools on uh, place-based education, culturally relevant education, whatever you want to call it. It's always going to be based on, on Hashika, and on the stories of our ancestors, on the traditions of living the, the, the tradition of the Kuik so that we continue to heal ourselves as we bump through the universe with our very fleshiness, which, uh, which Dick was a master of as well, being very human. And uh, thank you again for the opportunity just to share a glimpse then. And I, and I feel very relieved that there's so many others who follow and, and even as the day goes on because there's so many other dimensions of the man that um, will all come together at the end of this conference. Cheers. Uh, Richard always, for years, he was mentioning just when talking about this, this mentioning this book, "Keeping Slug Women Alive" <laughs> by Greg Saris. It's about Pomo keeping Pomo traditions like Pomo bas basketry alive. And I just wondered why is he mentioning keeping Slug Women alive all the time? So I finally got a copy of it, and like I wonder who, <laughs> you know, he's just loved that book so much. But it's just those little things that come up, the things that he cared about that he was trying to get other people to care about and pay attention to. So it's a good book, Keeping Slug Woman Alive. Um, thinking about the, you know, the work of the elders, uh, Charlie Joseph and George Davis and these greats, A.P. Johnson, all the ones that I've documented, even some of them that might, they might have um, 
um, missed and noted that they that they wish they got more of, like Tom Ucas and Forrest DeWitt. Um, their examples, you know, I'm just thinking like sometimes it feels like those who don't know history are doomed to take all the credit for it. You know, that's what what happens is all this groundwork that's laid, and then we come on, and we're like, yeah, look at what what we're doing and how strong we are. But it was all those those uh, the groundwork that was laid, those those decades and decades of hard work to make this stuff happen um, that that gives us this strength. <laughs>